After months of mounting calls, Australia has finally agreed to deliver another 30 Bushmaster armoured vehicles to help Ukraine fight Russia's invasion. The Prime Minister agreed to the support during a meeting overnight with Ukraine's President on the sidelines of the NATO summit in Lithuania. It adds to the 90 Australian personnel carriers that are already being used in Ukraine to move troops in and out of frontline areas. And it all comes amid the backdrop of Ukraine's push to join NATO. I spoke to our Europe Bureau Chief Steve Kinane, who's been at the summit in Vilnius. Well, it started with a bilateral meeting between Prime Minister Albanese and President Zelensky. Uh, that started with a hug and a handshake while the cameras were rolling. Both made opening statements. Prime Minister Albanese said, well, he praised the leadership of President Zelensky and also the courage and resilience of the Ukrainian people. Then President Zelensky thanked Australia for standing shoulder to shoulder with his people. Then the meeting went behind closed doors. We don't know exactly what they discussed. No doubt some of Australia's long-term commitments for helping Ukraine during their war with Russia. And then Prime Minister Albanese came out and he said, uh, he announced that uh, Australia would be gifting 30 Bushmasters to Ukraine. Now they've already sent 90 over. Uh, certainly when I was in Ukraine a few weeks ago, we spoke to frontline soldiers who said what an important resource they were. I spoke to some soldiers who in the Battle of Bakhmut were under fire from Russian artillery and they said that this vehicle protected them. So it means a lot to, to get the these vehicles and here's what Prime Minister Albanese said today. The Bushmasters are a symbol of Australia's support for Ukraine. They are valued very much by Ukrainian defence personnel and have saved their lives just as in the past they have been responsible for saving Australian lives. And it seems President Zelensky was in a slightly more upbeat mood today, Steve. That's right. As we discussed yesterday, he had a big spray on Twitter uh, about not getting a proper time frame for NATO membership. Now, that hasn't changed, but there were some developments today that probably pleased him a little bit more. Perhaps he's had time to consider his comments as well. But the G7 nations made a big announcement today about creating a framework, a security framework where G7 nations and other like-minded nations can go off and do bilateral security deals with Ukraine. And that's seen as a very positive thing for Ukraine, as is the fact that there's been more pledges for weapons. So yes, uh, the summit ended here today with President Zelensky far more upbeat, but don't expect him to stop knocking on the door to try and get some kind of pathway to NATO membership. As with all the requests they've been making for weapons, think of the tanks, think of uh, the fighter jets that they want. They keep asking and they keep asking and often they get what they want. So don't expect President Zelensky to stop pushing to try and get some kind of pathway to NATO membership.